Christian girls basketball team and their coach, Lee Reinhold. Uh, excuse me, Lee Reinhardt. There is a lot of great show here tonight. We welcome you, and we appreciate Ron's Pizza for being our host here tonight on PeakOfOhioTV.com. More to come after this on Chalk Talk. The weekend should be for relaxing, and that means no cooking. Check out what's hot at Ron's Pizza in Bell Fountain. On top of pizzas, they have subs, sandwiches, salads, and lots of sides like breadsticks, garlic cheese bread, pickle chips, beer-battered onion rings, loaded fries, and more. Check out a specialty pizza this weekend. Ron's Pizza is ready to cook for you. Call 292-7775 or stop by and dine in on South Main Bell Fountain. See more and a menu online at Ron's Pizza's Facebook page. Ohio High Point 664th Hair Force Salon is now open and ready to pamper you from head to toe. Treat yourself to a relaxing spa day with our wide range of services. Whether it's a fresh haircut, a soothing facial, or a perfect manicure and pedicure, we've got you covered. And here's the best part. Prices start at just $5. Yes, you heard that right, $5. You can look and feel amazing without breaking the bank. Appointments are available Wednesday through Friday, starting at 8.30 a.m. Come experience the 664th Hair Force Salon at Ohio High Point. And welcome back to Chalk Talk Live on PeakOfOhioTV.com, live from Ron's Pizza. I'm Ken Keller, along with our first guest here, Austin Hammond, senior at Bell Fountain High School, his golf coach, Isaac Childs. And first of all, Austin, congratulations on, on all of your success and your decision earlier this month is when you announced it, right, to go to Tiffany University. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it a lot. And yes, earlier this month. We were talking before we went on the air here. You're, you're making me feel real old here because, of course, your, your father, Matt Hammond, a longtime sports editor, uh, at the examiner, and, uh, you know, from 99 to 2010, I broadcast a lot of Chieftains basketball games. And I remember him taking you and your brother, little itty bitties, yeah. <laughs> on the yes. court there to, to, uh, to cover. What do you remember that from that growing up, just being go with your dad and your family to, to be able to cover sports, uh, really growing up in Bell Fountain, Chieftain land? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's helped me a lot because if you ask anyone around the high school, I'm pretty much a super fan at Bell Fountain High School at pretty much every athletic event, and I think it just helped me at a young age to develop the love for Bell Fountain. You're very well spoken. You're certainly not shy. Is that you think that helped you just being around all those people growing up? Yeah, I think it did just to build build good relationships. I'd say. Well, let's talk about golf. Uh, you know, first of all, when you announced that you were going to Tiffin University. Uh, it was a big deal, and congratulations on that, by the way. Has it sunk in that you're going to college because of how good of a golfer you are? I mean, I kind of get thoughts every, every once in a while where I'm like, dang, I'm really going to be a collegiate golfer in seven months. Um, so I, I'd say it sunk in a little bit, um, but still just a crazy, crazy thing that I get to do something that I love uh, and do it, do it in college. I read that you didn't start golfing until eighth or ninth grade. Is that yes, correct? Yes, ninth grade. Ninth grade. Is that the first time you like picked up a club? I mean, um, I'd like golf in the summer with uh, my grandparents, uh, my uncle. My uncle's the one who got me into golf. Um, but a couple times a summer really was all. So for you to really take it seriously and learn to play the game, which I think is late in life, and we'll ask your coach about that when we uh, we you know get to him here. So, so that's where you're starting and now where you're at that is incredibly fast I mean do you do you realize that yeah I think it's it's just crazy how fast I picked up on everything and another thing that you probably won't believe either is I've never had like a swing lesson before yeah. from a swing coach I've just been self-taught this entire way Childs has helped me out with my swing but just kind of self-taught let me guess YouTube yeah I go to YouTube <laughs> every once in a while TikTok nowadays all right too. yeah TikTok. you're right you're absolutely TikTok. right TikTok TikTok, YouTube, that's, uh, that's, that's the new tutor, right? Yes. <laughs> Let me bring in your coach, Isaac Childs. Coach, uh, first of all, thanks for coming on. We appreciate yeah, your thanks time. Thanks for having me. So you coached Austin the last two years. We were talking about you know, his late start in the game of golf. To see what he's accomplished and what he's about to do, not starting until he was really 12 or 13 years old. Have you seen that before? Yeah, it, it's, it's not often. Um, he's... The work that Austin puts in is is unbelievable. Um, you know, most of the time, kids that are playing college golf are starting at four or five years old swinging. 
the club, um, but for him to pick it up and have such a smooth swing and be able just to, to put in so many hours. I mean, he is, I don't know, a day goes by summertime that he's not just beating balls on the range and, and just putting work in. He was complaining about the weather before we went on the air tonight. He says it's hard to get out there and get some swings in. And, you know, it's nice to hear that he puts the work in because that's certainly a big part of it. How, how much of it is the work he does and just natural talent? I, I, it takes both. Um, he has that natural swing that's there, but the fact that he knows and I think just takes the time to learn what he's doing and how to improve that, um, especially in such a short time that he, he's able to figure out what he's doing wrong and how to fix it and then to put in the work to fix that. When you took over as his coach his junior year, did you know that he was in the midst of doing something special? I, when I first saw him playing um, that first year, it, he mentioned he's been wanting to play college golf since I've worked with him, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't see any doubt in my mind that he had the ability. Um, as long as he got his mind right, which he did a lot of improvement on that last year, and, and he's put himself in the position to be there. Austin, you mentioned starting at ninth in ninth grade. What, what kind of convinced you that you wanted to give this a shot? Yeah, it was actually funny. Um, the old coach at the time, Ryan Sawmiller, he uh, reached out to me. Him and my dad are pretty good friends, but he reached out to me and said uh, that his team was lacking numbers. And he, I had mentioned, because I had uh, Jason Steider in sixth grade, who was the coach before him. Um, and I kind of talked to him about golf every once in a while, but it was Sawmiller who reached out to me, asked if I wanted to join. And at that point, I had no clue what I was doing whatsoever. As a freshman, you averaged a score of 55 for every nine holes. Um, and then as a senior, 38, is that what I saw? Yeah, 38 as a senior. Coach will ask you that, you know, that, that improvement, going from a 55 to a 38 average over nine holes in, in, in less than four years of, of work. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, it, if, if you're doing it legit, it's unheard of. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can have your weekend guys that go out and make that difference with a pencil. <laughs> but, you know, he's doing it with sweat and blood and tears, and it, it was really impressive to watch him over the last couple of years. A pencil and a Nike wedge, right? Exactly. That's, <laughs> what, that's what you always say. Austin, you know, you, uh, you, you signed to play golf at D Division II school, too. I think that gets lost in the in, – that's, that's a big deal. You're going to Division II college, Tiffin University in Tiffin, Ohio. I'm very familiar with the town. I went to Heidelberg University. The two share the town. You're going to enjoy yourself there. It's a, it's a, honestly, it's a lot like Bell Fountain. I yeah. don't know if you got those vibes or not. A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's definitely smaller in size, um, but definitely feel that hometown love for sure. What, well, what about the school did attracted you? Yeah, um, I really liked. I mean, all the facilities there were great. I mean, I feel I talked to a couple teachers. Teachers were nice, really nice. Um, I just like the facilities and whole. Dining hall's a big thing too. Like the dining hall a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to eat, uh, but dining hall was up there for sure. I I wonder the, the the amount of money that a college will put into just food alone, feeding a bunch of eighteen to twenty two year old boys. <laughs> you know that's just got to be an incredible uh, amount. But yeah, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy that. What what did they like about you? Because I mean, it's got to be two ways. They got to want you as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, it first started with me reaching out to the head coach, and uh, was actually one of the graduate assistant head coaches that, uh, or assistant coaches, sorry. Um, but I think he, I emailed all three coaches, try to reach out, and I think once I started talking to him, he realized that like I'm just a hard worker, and I'm take or do whatever it takes uh, to get to the next level. Golf is such a unique sport at the high school level. Not a lot of high schools have it. I get, it's growing, certainly. Definitely. More, more and more schools have it. Let me start with you first, Austin. As a, as a teenage kid that likes to compete, what, w what about the sport at the high school level? T t take me through like the atmosphere of a, of a competition, of a tournament. Yeah, I like the competitive aspect of it for sure. And uh, playing with guys I know is fun as well. Uh, there's a couple guys I played with quite a bit. Um, but yeah, just the competitive aspect. And honestly, when you're good at it, it's more fun. Yeah. And so it's it, that helps. It, it's just fun for <laughs> me. Like you just go out, hit a good shot, have fun with guy friends, stuff like that. Talking with Austin Hammond. He's on his way to golf at Tiffin University, Division II College in Tiffin, Ohio. And 
Austin, you know, when most of us go out on the weekends and we, we swing to clubs and you know, we're joking around, we're having fun with our guys and, you know, our, our friends and things like that, joking around. Do you get any of that in a competition against Ben Logan or something like that? Do you, are you talking to your opponent as you guys are going up into each hole? Yeah, there's a, there's a few teams in particular that I have a lot of fun with. Uh, Tecumseh being one, I'm good friends with a few of the guys there. Um, so we like to have fun while still staying locked in and being competitive. How in tuned with the score are you, both individually and as a team, as you go through a tournament? Yeah, I think uh, that's one thing I need to work on a little more is sometimes I feel like I look at my score a little too much than I should during the round. Um, but definitely, I mean, I like to know how my guys are doing. So just asking my coach, like, how's everyone else doing? I just like to keep tuned in for sure with everyone else. So when you say that you're looking at your own, your own score a little too much, what do you mean by that? How, how can that be bad? Yeah, I think big thing for me this year was there was a few matches where I got off to a bad start. Uh, and in previous years, I would have fallen apart for the rest of the round. Um, but this year I felt like I could rebound really well. And I think just knowing where I was at score-wise helped me out to know I got to make a par on this hole to get to the score I want to get to. Coach Charles, you, you mentioned some of the things you liked about Austin and his game, and you noticed right away his work ethic being one, his swing is very natural. What are some things that maybe on top of that that, that – takes his game to the next level and what are some things that you believe he might need to work on as he continues on to his collegiate career i mean yeah his his work ethic is going to get him where he wants um the biggest thing we worked on a lot this year was just his his mental mindset as he's playing the round and, and not getting too hard on himself and beating himself up um he did that a lot in the past um and he, you know it, golf you're going to have some bad strokes you're gonna have some bad luck um and before he wasn't able to pull himself out of that as well as he's come now. So continuing to build that mental game is, is a huge part as he develops. That's got to be the hardest part about golf. I, we were talking before, and I was half, not even half joking. I was totally, it is the most frustrating sport on earth. I think hitting a golf, I have so much respect for somebody that can hit it far and straight or where they want to. When you started the game, I mean, yes, you started off better than most people do, but I'm sure you still you know, shank some and, and hook them into the, into the weeds and into the drink and things like that. How did you overcome that frustration and, and just get better? Because most people just give up at that point. Yeah, there was, uh, there was quite a few tough rounds, to say the least, and quite a few tough holes. Uh, but I think just keeping my head down and uh, continuing to work, I think, helped a lot. And I just, for some reason, I just wanted to get better. I just had that drive to get better. You mentioned your uncle's the one that kind of that got you onto the golf course, and, and you went with him. Does he say anything to you about? It? Do you talk to him very much about the, uh, about what you're about to do? Um, not as much as I'd like. Um, I mentioned before he uh, he lives up in Illinois in the Chicago area, so we try to get up there a couple or a couple times during the summer, get a few rounds in, um, but not as much as I'd like to. What? do you think made you fall in love with the sport? Because you mentioned love when you committed to Tiffin, and, and that struck me because I think you really got to love it to to want to excel at it, especially at the collegiate level. So what, what about the sport did, made you fall in love with it? Yeah, I think just, I think it provides a lot of good opportunities for sure and uh, good interactions with other people, um, even guys you're going up against. I mean, some of my most memorable, memorable rounds this year were uh, – with a kid from Tecumseh and a kid from Graham. So I think just having fun is a big thing for me. What's your favorite club in the bag? Favorite club in the bag. That's a good one. Um, I'd have to go probably the boring pick here, but I think the putter. I think uh, draining a long putt or uh, having a good putting round is a big thing for me. Take us through your, your approach when you're on the green and take us through a putt. What's your routine? Yeah, that's another thing I want to uh, get better at. If I'm being honest, um, we appreciate you so being honest. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think I I take too or I go too quick, uh, but normally I try to obviously put the ball marker down, uh, clean off the ball, uh, take a look at the line from behind it and on the other side of the hole, and then a couple practice strokes and go. But I think I need to uh, maybe look at the green more. I don't know, just a little bit of a longer approach to say. How much? To, certainly, you're looking at the slope. You're looking at. Uh, the distance, obviously, maybe the cut of the green. Did you find 
during your time with in high school that each green was cut differently depending on where you went, and did that affect how you you struck the ball? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, everywhere in the CBC has different greens to say the least. Um, you go to a place like Urbana where they're rolling at a 10 or 11 on the stint meter, and then go to Liberty and they're seven or eight. So I think it's important to. Um, I like the practice green a lot to learn, just kind of pick up as much as I can on what those greens are looking like. Coach, can you tell, tech, you know, because some people listening or watching this might not r know what the what the routine is or what the structure is for, for high school golf. I mean, in certainly in the pros, you're starting on a Thursday and ending on a Sunday. You're not really doing that in high school. I mean, how, how, how's the tournament run in high school? Uh, high school golf is, is, as you said before, is very unique. Um, you know, most sports, football, basketball, baseball, they're played the same way from, you know, Little League all the way through. But golf, um, it's, it's an individual sport in the future. Um, and to be, as a team sport in high school, we take six golfers out um, and they all score their own score. And then at the end, of the end of the round, our top four scores make up the team score. Um, so it's, it's an individual part, but then it's also a team part that you need four guys to come in with a solid score to, to win the match. As a coach, what's the bigger part of your job? Is it the technical aspect of it, teaching the kids the game, helping them with their swing, the mental aspect, or is it the strategy on the day of a tournament? Coaching golf is difficult just because once they start the round, there's not a lot I can change. You know, there's mm -hmm. there's no timeouts in golf. There's no there's no game plan. It's you know, once they start playing, they're playing their game. And if they're having a bad day, I can check on them, talk to them, make minor minor little changes to fix that. Um, but I think more importantly, it's it's the weeks leading up to the matches and the practice and and working on things like the the mental game and the swing and and getting the kids where they need to be before the match starts. Is picking out the six kids uh, more difficult than what you anticipated sometimes? Uh, this year was extremely tough. Um, <laughs> last year I had the luxury of having a smaller team, um, so it wasn't really an issue. This year, we, thankfully, we got some more kids interested, um, so it was a little bit tougher to make those choices, and, and I don't really like making the hard choices of who to leave back and who not to. Well, number one wasn't that difficult this uh, the past couple of years for Num you. Number one was pretty solid. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next year, but uh, I, got a, I got a spot to fill for sure. What was Austin like leadership-wise with, with the rest of the team? Uh, he's been a great leader. Um, he, he, his desire and his passion, you know, he kind of puts that into everybody. He, he stepped in almost as an assistant coach to me and, and would talk to the guys when he needed to and, and – you know, he really wanted to win. He wanted to do as much as he could, not just as an individual, uh, because that was that was already set in stone how he plays and how he's going to be. Um, he was already winning for himself, but he wanted to win as a team as well. Austin, do you get to pick your clubs that you put in your bag, or is that pretty much already set before? I know in in PGA you got a you have a certain amount that you can do, and and some guys go with different sets of clubs. How how does that work with you? Yeah, I normally keep the same clubs. I don't change my clubs very often. I recently got a new set of irons last year, um, but normally I'm not changing clubs very often. I got a new putter last year as well, but normally keeping the same setup throughout the season. I already asked you what your favorite club was. What's the one that gives you the most worries? Driver, unfortunately. Driver? I yeah. mean, that's another thing I want to get better at, I think. Um, just more consistent, I'd say, because I, I, I can hit it far, but sometimes it's a little offline, so just getting more offline, I'd say couple quick questions here before we let you go one um, you play an individual sport that's also a team sport you grew up going to games where there's hundreds of people in the stands thousands of people in the stands but you're playing a sport where there's they're called galleries even they're not even <laughs> like they're not they're not the big crowds it's not the fame that you might get with some of the other uh, mainstream sports did that ever bug you at all or did it bother, did you care I didn't really care too much. I mean, I kind of just like being out there by myself and being able to really lock in and just focus on what I'm doing. Do you follow PGA at all? I mean, you got a late start in golf. I mean, do you have a favorite golfer? Um, I'd say my favorite golfer these days is probably uh, Max Homa. He's uh, come on the scene as of late. And, uh, young guy with uh, 
a really good swing and really good game, I'd say. All right, all right. What are some things you want to accomplish at Tiffin when you take your game to the next level? Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely like to contribute to the team in every way that I possibly can, um, playing in events, helping out my guys with anything else they could need, and uh, just being a really good teammate. Four years at Bell Fountain, what did they mean to you? How did they help develop you to what you're about to do? Yeah, for sure. I think each year was a challenge, um, learning more and just working harder, I'd say. Um, but I'd say it really just helped me learn all aspects of golf and helped me dial in my game. Awesome. Congratulations on all of your success, Coach Childs. Thank you for your, your insight as well. We appreciate both of you. Best of luck at Tiffin. Thank you. And, uh, and keep in touch, all right? Awesome. All right. It's Austin Hammond. Thank you. And we will take a break. When we come back, we will have West Liberty Salem Girls Bowling. That's up next on Chalk Talk, live from Ron's Pizza, right here on peakofohiotv.com. God's Wealth Advisors asked the question, where could retirement take you? We want to go to Alaska. Never been there. And I've been wanting to go for the last 15 years. My wife keeps on saying, no, we're not old enough yet. I think we're old enough now to go enjoy Alaska. At Dodd's Wealth Advisors, we want to hear your retirement dreams and help you turn them into reality. I'm Paul from Urbana. Where could retirement take you? Ohio High Point's 664th Hair Force Salon is now open and ready to pamper you from head to toe. Treat yourself to a relaxing spa day with our wide range of services. Whether it's a fresh haircut, a soothing facial, or a perfect manicure and pedicure, we've got you covered. And here's the best part. Prices start at just $5. Yes, you heard that right, $5. You can look and feel amazing without breaking the bank. Appointments are available Wednesday through Friday, starting at 8.30 a.m. Come experience the 664th Hair Force Salon at Ohio High Point. The weekend should be for relaxing, and that means no cooking. Check out what's hot at Ron's Pizza in Bell Fountain. On top of pizzas, they have subs, sandwiches, salads, and lots of sides like breadsticks, garlic cheese bread, pickle chips, beer-battered onion rings, loaded fries, and more. Check out a specialty pizza this weekend. Ron's Pizza is ready to cook for you. Call 292-7775 or stop by and dine in on South Main Bell Fountain. See more and a menu online at Ron's Pizza's Facebook page. And welcome back to Chalk Talk, live from Ron's Pizza on peakofohiotv.com. I'm Ken Keller, filling in tonight for Caleb Spinner, who has the night off. With me is West Liberty Salem Girls Bowling, their first-year head coach, Natasha Mueller. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Go ahead and put the, uh, the microphone a little close. There you go. Okay. There you go. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we had a chance to talk here before we got on the air. It's, uh, you got a great group of girls, first of all. Yes. So this uh, four and five on the season to start, two and three in the OHC. Talk about how the season has, has begun for you and, and just your thoughts. Um, with this being my first year bowling coach, we still depend a lot on the boys bowling coach, Larry, to help. Um, we have a lot of new girls. We have um, even our senior that we have this year. It's her first year. So mm. we have a lot of newcomers that are still learning. Um, but we have awesome, they, they come from different areas of the school and they all get along and they help each other and they've come a long way. Your first year as a head coach, but you've been with the program for many years. What did you take from those years learning about the game of bowling that made you decide you wanted to take this on? Um, my son graduated and he bowled for four years, so they needed a bowling coach this year and I offered to help and... It's been amazing. It's You see a totally different view of being a parent to a coach, and you see a new side to the sport, and then you you have to also put in your mind you want your own child to go further, but then you can't play favoritism, so you have to be fair with them all, and if they don't do good, you got to pull them. And that is a very difficult dynamic that I've seen a lot of coaches have to to go through uh, when you're coaching your child on the team because all eyes are on that aren't they yes. I mean, they're, they're they're watching not only the other teammates but parents and yes. and maybe some fans are, are watching how you treat your child compared to others how, how much is that in on your mind when you're coaching um i i explained to my daughter when i first started coaching that i wasn't going to do favoritism um she was our anchor and she fell off her game so i pulled her from being our anchor and i told her until she starts getting her strikes back, 
she's not anchoring and she's getting there. It's just taking time. I talked to Coach Childs with the golf team, uh, you know, just before you came on. I'm going to ask you the same question because I'm interested in this. Actually, before we get to that, t take us through what a bowling tournament, what a bowling match is like at the high school level. How's the format? Um, the, it's basically the same, but not as lengthy as a college tournament. Um, the, we have a OHC tournament coming up in February. And it's about eight hours long. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's a very long tournament. They do, oh, I'm going to say, four matches with five Baker games. So it's it's a long day. and A regular season match, okay? Like a two, like last yes. night you had a win over Northeastern. Yes. Uh, what, what's the format? Is it one game, two games? Is it, how, how does it work? Well, um, we have two games with four Bakers. Um, with us not able to have a JV team this year, I make sure that all of my team gets to bowl. Mm -hmm. um, if I have a, th I take the bottom three out of the first, after the first match, and I'll put in my next three. So everybody gets a turn. Um, everybody bowls Bakers. Um, Can you explain what that is, by the way? You um, Bakers is where you have five girls per game, and they only bowl two um, frames. Okay. So they, like, one would bowl first frame and then sixth frame. And then your anchors would be fifth, fa fifth frame and tenth frame. So they only get two frames per uh, game. And we have four of those. You've won two of <coughs> your last three matches. Yes. Building some momentum. Is there momentum in, in bowling? Yeah, I think the girls are getting more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple girls that just started this year, and they were they were a little shy, and they're finally coming out of their shell. And we had some girls that's been here two years now, and they've exceeded what they've done in the past. So I'm very proud of the girls. You guys beat uh, Northeastern last night, 19-16 to 16-99. Yes. Is that considered a close match, or was it a comfortable win? Uh, how does that in the in the grand scheme of things? Um, it we it was close. Um, we didn't realize how close it was until mm -hmm. the end. So, how dramatic can things get? Uh, you know, in the tenth frame or in the late in the game or in the. I don't want to call it a game, the match. Yeah. Um, how, how dramatic can things get when it comes down to a bowler and they need a strike or they gotta, they have to do something to keep yourself in the game? Right. Um, <clears throat> usually our anchor during our bakers will get the most stressed out because the team relies on them to get the three strikes in the 10th frame. Or it's just like if the team's lagging in their match, then they expect their anchor to pick them up that's why we usually put our best bowler in for our anchor okay um here's a question i wanted to ask you you know that i asked coach Charles with golf as well how much of your job is coaching the technical as aspect of things during the week when there's not a tournament like how to hold the ball how to release uh, angles things like that and how much of it is strategy on game night um they we expect our girls to practice as they would a match um if they're struggling we will larry and i the boys coach will help them adjust to where they need to move left or right and which arrow on the lane that they need to aim for um to know which oil pattern if it's a house oil pattern on the lane or the district uh, oil pattern to know where to hit the pocket on the lane. We've talked a lot about oil patterns in the yes. past when we've had <laughs> other, but maybe for those that are just joining us that haven't heard about it, that is not something I ever would have thought would be uh, an issue or something that you had to think about. So maybe explain what, how an oil pattern affects how you play. Um, an oil pattern, um, it is where your ball will travel the most. Um, if you hit outside the oil pattern, you won't be able to hit the pocket right. But if you hit the oil just right, it will hit the pocket to where you will bring the ball to the head pin. Are you having fun? Yes, I am. Enjoying it? Enjoying the, the uh, just uh, work? I mean, I'm sure you know, of course, your daughter, but you know these other girls because your daughter's growing up with them. Is it, yes. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. So, um, so what's been the highlight of the season in your mind? We'll ask the girls this when they come on, but the, the highlight of the season so far. 
I, I want to say the highlight of this season is see the girls build each other up. Um, past seasons, like, we've had the girls get down in their head because the, they had a bad frame. But this season, it's been more upbringing. They're not letting them get down on themselves. They're building everybody up. So I got to say that was my highlight is watch them build each other. Lillian Gerhardt is your, is your leading average. Yes. And uh, she's in the upper half of the entire OHC. Yes. Talk about her game and what, what she means to your team. Um, Lily has exceeded majorly today or this season. She seems like she's understanding the bowling patterns better. Mm -hmm. um, and then she has her days where she struggles, where she's trying to figure out what she did wrong, but she comes back just amazing. She's, this is her third year bowling with us, and back at her freshman year, she didn't even want to bowl. Mm -hmm. But here she is in the top OHC and doing amazing. Was this expected, by the way, to have the season that she's having right now? Is this kind of what you, what you thought she could do? Uh, we talked last year. Um, our girls missed districts by 18 pins, which they were really hurt, and they told each other that they were going to make it to districts this year. So they're trying really hard to make it to districts this year. Right. Ready to bring some girls on yeah. here? Let's wave them in here. They can come on up here. We'll, uh, we'll have somebody that's going to be the point guard of the, uh, of the thing here. So here we go. What's your name? Alyssa Mueller. Alyssa, you're, that's your daughter. Yes. Your daughter. We talked about Alyssa. And we'll bring everybody. We're going to come up back here. Here we'll uh, we'll get through here. You're going to be the point guard right here. So you're the one that's got to <laughs> put the uh, the microphone to people's mouth. So you're Alyssa. And what's your name? Ellie. Ellie. Ollery. Ollery. There we go. I'm Sadie Pohl. Okay. So let's start with uh, Alyssa here. Alyssa, we talked with your mom here before the difficulties on coaching your daughter in a, in a game when you really got <laughs> to uh, be careful how she treats you compared to the others do you do you feel that as well do you feel the eyes on you when when you know she's coaching you up sometimes yeah what's it like playing for your mom it's good because then she's always there if i need help okay so let's uh let's talk about i'm looking at your uh your average this year 142.7 um, that's kind of, you know, right, uh, I think third on the team as far as team average goes. Talk about what, what made you want to go into bowling and play the sport? Um, well, my brother did it his high school, and then I kind of just, like, wanted to do it. What class are you? I'm class of 2025. Which is a junior? Yep. Okay. They always say that. They always say the number, yep. you know, the year. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> sophomore, junior, senior, please. But no, it's a, I have to do some quick math, and I'm able to do that. So yeah. you're a junior. You're, how long have you been going, bowling? Uh, all my high school. Okay. Did you do it as a family fun thing before that? You talked about your brother doing it. So. We did a little bit every now and then, but no, nothing, like, too serious before. Okay. So talk about... Talk about what it's like when you're bowling in a, in a regular season match. You get nervous? Is it fun? Is it ex exciting? Or is it just uh, just bowling? There's some days where it's nerve-wracking and then others where it's just full-on fun. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's hand it over here to Ellie here. Ellie Ullery. Um, Ellie, you come into this uh, season, you're, you're bowling a 137.6 average. Talk about how you feel your season's going so far. Um, it's going pretty good. Um, I could be doing a little better, but I've also been working with a new ball. So, and my coach has me doing a little, couple, a couple things different. So, for, for the people that are watching, how much does a new ball? Because that's your equipment. How, how much does that affect how you bowl? Is it, uh, it? Does it take time for you to figure out what you like, the feel of it, things like that? Yes, it does. Um, there's different weights of the bowling ball. There's different types of bowling balls. For slow, if you throw it slower, there's a different type of bowling ball for that. There's multiple different. How many bowling balls do you are you allowed to take to a meet, and how many do you take to a meet? Um, Does I the school provide them, or do they have, to, they have to get their own? Our students buy their own bowling balls. Mm -hmm. uh, the school provides the bowling bag, yeah. and they are... They don't have to buy their own bowling ball. They could always use one at the, at the center, lanes. or they could use a friend's. But there's no limit on how many you can take. Yeah. Um, 
but I've seen a couple students take like three bags. Three yeah. bags? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many do you take? Um, I have, well, with my new ball, it's three. Three, three balls? Yes. Okay. What's your favorite part about, what, what got you into bowling? <laughs> um, my brother also did it. <laughs> Everybody's brother is getting yeah. them into it. Here. <laughs> I I also joined because of Alyssa. She's been my best friend. Oh, that's nice. So. What do you like about it? Is, is it uh, you know you're you're a varsity bowler? You're bowling uh, for your school. Does that does that register with you when you're uh, when you're in a tournament? Uh, yes, it does, and it, it's makes it more fun when you're with friends, and it makes it a lot less stressful. Um, Sometimes you do get mad a little bit, especially at me and Alyssa's least favorite pin that mm -hmm. bugs us the most. Which is? The 10 pin. 10 pin. That's typically <laughs> what most will say, right? Yep, and they, they have their chance, and the 10 pin is known as Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> you name it. Yes, <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I won't mention Bruno either. Let's get the microphone over to Sadie there. Sadie, Paul. Sadie, you're second on the team in, in average with a uh, 146.4 average. Talk about how your season's going, and is it meeting your expectations coming into the year? Um, sometimes. <laughs> yeah? Sometimes not. I mean, last week was really good, and then yesterday's match was not so hot, so. Do you feel like you have a strength to your game and uh, some, I won't call it a weakness, but something that you need to work on? Um, I mean, my rotation on my ball isn't always the best, so I need to work on that quite a bit. But I can really just chuck my ball sometimes, so <laughs> that's helpful. So you got obviously a big part of your equipment is the bowling ball itself. Do any mm -hmm. of you wear wrist, uh, the, mm -hmm. the wrist braces and things like no. that? No. Any gloves, anything like that? No. Is that allowed even? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, they're even allowed at tournaments. Um, I know Alyssa's second year, she had to have a brace for because she kept going over. Mm -hmm. And we bought one that connected around her elbow almost, and it kept her mm -hmm. from going over the ball. Okay. So expectations for the rest of the year here. What, what do you guys want <coughs> to accomplish both individually and as a team? We'll start with you. Um, get the average up, I'd say, a little bit. So get it past 150 at least, you know. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Um, mine would be get my average up and hit a 250 by the end of the season. Okay, great. Mine would also to get my average up and then hit at least 250. What do you think you guys can do? And, Coach, I'll ask you to answer this as well. What can you guys do as a team as you uh, get to the end of the season? Um, I think we just keep each other out of our heads because mm -hmm. we seem to get in our heads a lot. Okay. Coach, as a team, what do you want to see them accomplish, whether it's uh, in the standings, in the tournament, or just – as a team yeah um <clears throat> i know sectionals they did really good last year um we had two girls make it on to districts um we want the whole team to make districts this year and possibly state they're looking for a state tournament this year okay that's very good all right what's uh when you guys are bowling against uh, an, another school and this is uh, i asked the same question with the golf uh before Bowling can be a very social sport. You know, if you're just on a weekend with your family, your friends at a birthday party, you're joking around, you're talking with who are you, you're bowling, like, oh, that was great, and you sit down. Do you guys do that with, uh, with other schools, or is it uh, you're focused and you're intense, uh, <laughs> or is there joking around with the other teams? There's some days where we joke around with other teams, and then there's others where we're, like, dead focused on the lane we're at. What do you like to see, Coach? Um, I know a couple of the coaches will talk, and they say they don't like bowling against other teams because they're just so focused. They're not fun. But every coach that we've gone up against, they said we have a fun team. The girls are nice. They help the other team stay up. So our girls don't just help out each other. They help out the other team, too. All right. Well, girls, thank you so much for your time. Sadie, Alyssa, Ellie. Uh, Coach Mueller, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck the rest of the season, okay? Thanks. Thanks for having well, us. Guys, yeah, hang on here. Don't put the microphone down <laughs> here. We're going to take a commercial <laughs> break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up the show with Calvary Christian Girls Basketball. They're having an amazing season here halfway through the season. We're going to talk about that with Coach Reinhardt and some of the girls on that team. It's all coming up as we continue on with Chalk Talk, live from Ron's Pizza here on peakofohiotv.com.
The weekend should be for relaxing, and that means no cooking. Check out what's hot at Ron's Pizza in Bell Fountain. On top of pizzas, they have subs, sandwiches, salads, and lots of sides like breadsticks, garlic cheese bread, pickle chips, beer battered onion rings, loaded fries, and more. Check out a specialty pizza this weekend. Ron's Pizza is ready to cook for you. Call 292-7775 or stop by and dine in on South Main Bell Fountain. See more and a menu online at Ron's Pizza's Facebook page. Ohio High Point's 664th Hair Force Salon is now open and ready to pamper you from head to toe. Treat yourself to a relaxing spa day with our wide range of services. Whether it's a fresh haircut, a soothing facial, or a perfect manicure and pedicure, we've got you covered. And here's the best part. Prices start at just $5. Yes, you heard that right, $5. You can look and feel amazing without breaking the bank. Appointments are available Wednesday through Friday, starting at 8.30 a.m. Come experience the 664th Hair Force Salon at Ohio High Point. Dodd's Wealth Advisors asked the question, where could retirement take you? We want to go to Alaska. Never been there. And I've been wanting to go for the last 15 years. My wife keeps on saying, no, we're not old enough yet. I think we're old enough now to go enjoy Alaska. At Dodd's Wealth Advisors, we want to hear your retirement dreams and help you turn them into reality. I'm Paul from Urbana. Where could retirement take you? Welcome back to Chalk Talk Live from Ron's Pizza on peakofohiotv.com. Ken Keller joined now by Calvary Christian uh, Spartan Varsity Girls Basketball 12 in 1. I want to welcome in Coach Dave, correct? Uh, Coach Lee Reinhardt. Lee. Yes, that's all right. I knew I didn't yeah. write it down. I knew Reinhardt. Coach Reinhardt, thank you for coming on. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate it. By the way, congratulations on the start to the season, 12 and 1 on the year. Your thoughts on how your team's playing compared to what your expectations were? Okay, yeah. So um, coming into this year, I knew that we lost a couple of key seniors, uh, especially some scoring and some really tough defenders. And um, so coming in this year, I was curious who was going to step up mm -hmm. so we have we only have two seniors on the team um, that's Madri Cook and Abigail Reinhardt and then we start three other juniors and so those juniors have really stepped up my uh, my hope was that they would step up but <coughs> you just you just never know they've got to come out they've got to perform mm -hmm. uh, they've got to want to do it and so, uh, so far, I'm really pleased with the way that those juniors have stepped up and even the seniors. Uh, so, for example, we lost a lot of scoring uh, when senior Hannah Marlowe uh, graduated last year. She was averaging probably about 15 points a game. And um, Abigail Reinhard, who started her uh, varsity career as a freshman, sophomore, in more of the point guard role, the defender role, the... Uh, the distributor role, you know, breaking the, pe the breaking the press and getting it to the scorers, that was kind of her role. Um, you know, she understood that coming into this year, she was going to have to step into that scoring role. And it's uh, from her personality, that's not something that she, uh, she is uh, looking to do. Um, but her and Madri Cook have definitely been able to pick up that scoring loss that we had with the seniors leaving. I assume Ag Abigail's your daughter? Abigail's my daughter. Okay. Yes. The last name kind of uh, sure, clues yeah. in on that. But, yeah. uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes, they call me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we talk about, because I, I do have a question about uh, Abigail and, and Madri. Um, is that how I pronounce it right? Yeah. Madri. Yep. And uh, tell us a little bit, how long have you been the coach there, first of all? So um, I've been coaching varsity basketball with Calvary Christian. I'm super... Uh, happy to have had the opportunity to coach at Calvary for 10 years. Okay. Uh, I've, I was a varsity boys coach for eight years. Uh, and then all, all my sons ended up graduating from high school. And my daughter is the last, uh, the last Reinhardt in the house. And so um, I decided to make the switch uh, to girls varsity basketball these last two years here. Um, so total of 10 years. Total of 10 years. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the tradition at Calvary Christian in, in basketball overall, but especially girls' basketball? Okay. Yeah, so the tradition uh, with Calvary Christian, uh, we have historically, uh, we, we just got into OHSAA last year. Mm -hmm. So these last two years, we, we actually are competing in the tournament. 
Uh, we're competing against, against more OHSAA teams, um, but we're still in uh, the Ohio Valley Christian Conference. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're kind of in between. Uh, um, our history is that we play our home games at Union Station. Union Station is a small Hoosiers-like uh, basketball gym. Yeah. Uh, it's got tile floors, does not have wood, uh, wood floor. Um, it is old school. Uh, before there was old school. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so that's a little bit about the history of Calvary basketball. Calvary basketball has historically been uh, very successful uh, in whatever conference that uh, we've been in. Um, and uh, we've had uh, gritty, um, very uh, tough playing teams uh, throughout the last 10 years. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to know because when I was doing my research here before the show here tonight, I saw so many, you know, conference championships and, and winning seasons and deep runs in the tournament. Uh, what's it been like the past two years to be in the OHSAA? How has that changed your – I don't know that it's a change probably your approach. It's still the same sport, but the competition's different. The competition's definitely different. Uh, so our school, uh, Calvary Christian, is, uh, you know, we're committed to – glorifying God in the way that we play basketball. We're committed to teaching uh, biblical uh, principles to our kids and basically discipling them. And uh, so when, when you talk about that, we also talk about the size of the school. So the size of the school is really, really small. I think we've got just over uh, 400. We've been growing by leaps and bounds, uh, but uh, just over 400 uh, students in K through 12, um, and I, Ryan Hyde will correct me with the actual <laughs> number, but I, I'm going to just say just over 400. Um, and so, when you have that, uh, you know we have situations where we have these kids that are doing multiple sports, multiple extracurricular activities. We don't have the numbers to pull from, uh, like some other schools. And uh, so, based on that, we get girls we get boys that have that play with a ton of heart um, but sometimes we just don't have the numbers uh, that some of these bigger schools do have and so that can be that can be a struggle um, and the girls know it uh, they know that's a challenge uh, they know that anytime we play an OHSAA team that it's going to be a tough game um, so, so yeah, the, the competition has definitely uh, increased. Uh, you know, last year in the OHSA tournament, we drew uh, Jackson Center. And Jackson Center is a, you know, their Shelby County League team. Uh, excellent basketball. Uh, their record in, the, in, the, in their league was, you know, mediocre. Uh, it wasn't great last year. Um, but, you know, it was a really tough game for us. And, and we went in knowing that. And we still play with grit. We know that uh, we represent God in the way that we play the game, whether we win or, win or lose. And then sometimes people are really watching you when you lose to see how you're going to react. And that's really where we can have the testimony of Christ uh, can be elevated uh, even in that situation right there. Talking with Coach Lee Reinhard, the head coach of the Calvary Christian Spartan Varsity Girls Basketball Team. 12-1 and one on the season. You won 11 games in a row, including last night against Temple Christian. What are you guys doing well on the court that's uh, key to this winning streak? So I think one of the things, one of the keys is to constantly evolve throughout the season. So uh, we're always throwing in new looks. We're always throwing in new inbounds plays, uh, additional uh, sets to basically take what the defense gives us. If we have a man-to-man a, a -man defense that's over-aggressive, over-pursuing, we'll put in a set that uh, takes advantage of that. If we have a defense that's sitting back in a zone, uh, we'll put in an offense that takes advantage of that. And so the goal is is that by the end of the year that we have, we have executed multiple sets that can basically adapt to any type of game time situation. You mentioned that you're a relatively young team, uh, e even at 12 and one. But your two seniors, Abigail Reinhardt and Matt Hurry Cook, are your two leading scores, and they lead a lot of your uh, statistical categories. How important is it for your veterans, your your seniors, to also be? I don't know if I want to say your best players on the court, but at least the ones that are putting up the the numbers. 
How important is that? Yeah, how important is it? Is it important for, for the seniors to be doing that to kind of lead by example? Um, uh, well, i tell you what. Actually, the way that, uh, the way that this team is, is uh, designed and the mm -hmm. way they operate, um, they, we literally pray for each other in every practice. We literally pull for each other, cheer for each other. The seniors, actually, when we are, uh, when we are winning by a substantial amount, the seniors may only get two and a half quarters of playing time. And they're still putting up numbers uh, even with the two and a half qu uh, quarters of pl playing time. And mm -hmm. The reason why that's important, they understand that uh, they need to be healthy so that in the end of the season that when we get into the tournament that they're healthy, they're not worn out. And uh, they also understand that we've got to have everybody involved in the game, especially, especially if we get into a game like, for example, last night. Uh, Madri and Abigail probably got about two and a half, two and three quarters of playing time. They understand that. Mm -hmm. They know that. And when their teammates do well, they are the first to cheer them on. And so that's really what uh, I, I feel that really sets our team apart. It's kind of like a family, a discipleship family, and I love it. I love every minute of it. Is that something that you as a coach have instilled in the team? I mean, I'm sure you've talked about it, but... How much of it is, is you preaching that, and how much of that is just, is just naturally there? So um, each one of the girls on the team, um, every single one of them, has got a beautiful heart. Um, and that comes from you know, the decisions that they make to basically humble themselves before the Lord, but also it comes from their parents, the upbringing, uh, the people that are uh, surrounding them. And so they all have to choose uh, to be a part of what we've got going on. And they all have. And, um, you know, I, I take it as my role to get the girls in a position to begin to come together as a family and as a team and develop that team chemistry. Uh, you can't force it. You can't fake it. Um, it's, it's real only when they decide to buy in. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what I was expecting. I just wanted to hear it, you know, yeah. because, I mean, coaching isn't just pushing buttons and that happens. You know, it's yeah. the, the, the kids, the girls, the players have to buy into it. Sounds like they are. So yeah. why don't we bring in the girls here? If we can. We're going to we'll not take a commercial. We'll kind of wave them down so we can get their attention. There we go. Who do we got uh, joining us tonight? Okay, so this is uh, Junior Kari Gantz mm -hmm. and uh, Senior Abigail Reinhard and Senior Madri Cook. Okay, come on in, ladies. Somebody's going to have to sit in the middle here and, uh, and hold the microphone. Who wants to take that on here? There we go. What's your name? Uh, Marjorie. All right, Marjorie. Okay. And then who we got here right next to me here? Uh, my name's Abigail. All right, Abigail. And I'm Kari. Kari, by the way, congratulations. Wall of Fame member, uh, at least chicken. I was at that uh, ceremony last night. You, I know you weren't there. You were playing a game, but what, what did that mean to you to, to get on the wall of fame because of your academics and just being recognized for being a good student? What, what did that mean to you? It, it was a real honor for me. It was, it was really nice. It was kind of surprising, but yeah. it was really fun. <laughs> well, that speaks a lot about you as a person. I think that's and that needs to be recognized as well. So, all right, Madri, uh, you uh, you have the microphone. So we'll ask you first here. Yeah. You uh, average 10 points a game, over two and a half steals a game. More importantly, as a team, you guys are 12 and one. What, what's the season been like for you? How do you feel you guys are playing? And uh, what's been the highlight so far? Um, I feel like the season's been going really well. Um, we've like all of all of us have been playing together for quite a while since like junior high, so we have that team chemistry there. So when we get out on the court, it's just it's fun because they're my friends, and like if you make a mistake. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I know that they'll they either help me get it back on the next one or, like, it'll be all right. So. And, you're, and you're a senior? Yep. Ha, yep. Been playing four years? Um, I mean, in high, in high school, yeah. Okay, so yep. you've been playing all four years. What's it like to be a Spartan? What, what's, that, what's that mentality? Being a Spartan, I'd say um, it keeps me in check when I get, like, intense during some games just to remember that, like, I'm playing for God, and so the way I react to either how refs call something or other – Players, I have to remember to just stay positive. Like, it's okay. It's just a game. All right. Abigail, why don't you take the microphone here? 
always when I when I talk to a player whose dad is the coach, you know, there's there's more sets of eyes on you. It's just it's just the way it is. I mean, do you feel that? I mean, or is it you're comfortable enough with your team that it really doesn't even affect you much? Um, it really depends on the day. Sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes it can feel like he's getting on me extra, but it doesn't. It, I never take it to heart because I know that he's in coach mode, but he never lets coach mode overtake dad mode. Um, so. I don't know. He he definitely treats me differently than the other girls, but that's kind of his right to do so, and I'm okay with that. That's good. I and mean, well, when you buy in, it helps the rest of the team buy in too, and that's as much as being a senior as as being the the coach's daughter as well. I don't really like to bring that up too much because I know for coaches too, <laughs> it's you know, she's another player, right? Yeah, she's another player, but she is my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> is that a, is that a difficult dynamic sometimes? Um, you know. I've been able to navigate that. Um, you know, some of the best times that I'm going to remember <laughs> 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 is literally driving to and from practice yeah. with my daughter. And uh, it's good stuff. And if you have the ability to coach, uh, if you have the ability to coach your kids, man, I would really recommend you do that because you'll never get that time back. Yeah, words well felt, and uh, any parent that has coached them or not but been able to take their kids to a practice and just sit there and watch the practice is, you knows exactly what you're talking yeah. about and, yeah. and what those drives, more importantly than even the practice, just, just the conversations you have with your child on Absolutely. the way. It's something yeah. that uh, I think every parent knows exactly what you're going through right here. Abigail, now I was doing my homework here on, on statistics, and – this is a team game, but I'm going to break down some individual statistics here. And the website didn't look like it had the last few games on, but I'm going to assume it's relatively close. You are number one in the league in scoring, number one in the league in assists, and number one in the league in steals. That's a very well-rounded season that you are having. What does that mean to you as a basketball player that you're uh, excelling in some of the most important statistical categories that there are in basketball? Um, I would say it's definitely a great privilege because – a lot of times when you're the team stat leader, your teammates aren't around you as much, mm-hmm. and you kind of feel like you have to shoulder that load. But I have a great team who, from game to game, I might not be the lead scorer, and that's okay because we still won the game at the end of the day. Um, so it's a privilege to be on a team where I'm able to do that, but I don't, I don't feel like I don't have a team around me yeah. that, that's helping me along. No, very well put. Kari, l- let me ask you here. Kari, uh you're very well-rounded season, six six points a game, over five rebounds a game, and, a, and an assist and, and you know one point two assists here. What's your favorite part about basketball? What what do you enjoy? Are you, are you scoring, rebounding, defense? Is, do you have a favorite part? Um, probably scoring. I've always been a person to like just want to score. I don't. Um, I think that I have to remember sometimes like you have to you need to step back. You got to play defense. You got to get low. I think sometimes I struggle with that, but um, I don't know. I I like to I like playing with my like it's fun to play with these girls. I played with them for a long time, and I don't know. There's a lot of younger girls coming up that are also really fun that um, have a lot of fun personalities, and it's just super fun. So just a few minutes left, so I'm going to ask you two questions. As you know, before we end it here, your expectations as you continue through the the last half of this season, going to tournament. What what goals do you have and what's been the highlight so far for you this year I think for me my goal would be to um, just to probably play a good solid defensive game every game and um, probably I don't know I don't, sorry I get really cloudy when I talk no. <laughs> But um, well, it's cloudy outside, so yeah, I get, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, probably the highlights of the season would probably just be like, um, I've just been, I guess, scoring and rebounding more than I did last year. So that's really fun for me to be more involved in the game than I was last year. So, and yeah. Okay. All right, Matt Hurry. Uh, same thing with you. Your expectations here going going down the rest of the season and uh, your highlight to the year so far. I'd say, is it like my personal expectations or like team expectations? Yeah, whatever you want to make it, yeah. It's, that's um, why I asked the question. I'm interested in people's okay. answers in this. I'd say team expectation, just for us to continue to grow together and continue like growing that chemistry. So like more talking on the court, mm-hmm. communication. 
Um, it's always a good thing. And I'd say my highlight of the year is probably getting to play with my best friend for 13 years. Aw, very sweet. All right, Abigail, you can't use that same one. Uh, actually, you probably <laughs> Listen, I, I'm not going to put any restrictions. If that's what you want to say, go ahead. But uh, y what do you want to see as a team? What, as far as you, you know, you're getting close to the, uh, the postseason tournaments, that's what you play for. Uh, what do you want to see this team do? Yeah, so for us, this would be, if we make it to the championship of our league, it would be, I think, the fifth year in a row for mm -hmm. our team. Um, and it'd be really great to win again, um, especially for Madri and I. That would be our close out our high school career without ever having to see a loss at the end of the season um, for our conference. Um, and it'd be really great for all of the other girls to be involved in that, too. Um, our, our three juniors, um, in the past we've had JV teams, so there hasn't been as much opportunity to play on the varsity, uh, get some varsity playing time. And it's been really awesome because that JV playing time has translated into excelling on the varsity court. Um, and so getting to compete in a championship for the team would be awesome. Yeah. And some of my favorite memories from this year um, are our bus rides. We, we can get pretty heated sometimes, but we know at the end of the day, even if we don't disagree on, or even if we disagree on something, we're still going to pull for each other on the court, and we still love each other just as much. All right. Abigail, thank you so much. Hang out here, girls. Coach uh, Reinhardt, thank you for your time. Congratulations on the start. Best of luck the rest of the year. Keep in touch, and we'll be rooting for you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Hang out here real quick. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up. You're watching Chalk Talk live on peakofohiotv.com, live from Ron's Pizza, back after this. Ohio High Point 664th Hair Force Salon is now open and ready to pamper you from head to toe. Treat yourself to a relaxing spa day with our wide range of services. Whether it's a fresh haircut, a soothing facial, or a perfect manicure and pedicure, we've got you covered. And here's the best part. Prices start at just $5. Yes, you heard that right, $5. You can look and feel amazing without breaking the bank. Appointments are available Wednesday through Friday, starting at 8.30 a.m. Come experience the 664th Hair Force Salon at Ohio High Point. Dodd's Wealth Advisors asked the question, where could retirement take you? We want to go to Alaska. Never been there. And I've been wanting to go for the last 15 years. My wife keeps on saying, no, we're not old enough yet. I think we're old enough now to go enjoy Alaska. At Dodd's Wealth Advisors, we want to hear your retirement dreams and help you turn them into reality. I'm Paul from Urbana. Where could retirement take you? Welcome back to Chalk Talk, live from Ron's Pizza on peakofohiotv.com. I'm Ken Keller, filling in for Kayla Spinner here tonight. Uh, great show, so much fun. Austin Hammond, uh, who's going on to play collegiate golf with uh, Tiffany University. We spoke with him to uh, start. We spoke with Coach Mueller and members of the West Liberty Salem girls bowling team, and then we wrapped it up with Calvary Christian girls basketball and Coach Lee Reinhardt. Uh, just a tremendous group of kids all up and down this hour. And uh, just great time talking to them. This show will be archived on peakofohiotv.com if you want to check it out later. Uh, I want to thank executive producer Lou Vito for letting me fill in here tonight. Absolute blast. I had a great time, and uh, I do appreciate that. My thanks to Gary Coffin on the, on the boards here, working the sound. Chad Wilkinson back at the studio. And uh, Caleb Spinner, who will be back uh, next week, I would assume. I'm Ken Keller, and we thank you for watching here. Chalk Talk. Live from Ron's Pizza on peakofohiotv.com. Have a great night.